Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Now, we have a new assistant named Emma Sky. Her sister, Lana Sky, is being accused for a crime that she actually admitted that she committed. But something's not adding up, and we're going to hopefully figure out some answers in today's episode. If you guys are cool with that and you're down with that, everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go. February 23, 9.34 a.m., District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Hey, it's Nini's birthday today. All right, hopefully we get some good luck. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wrights? Frankly, there are still a lot of gray areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their clients. The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Sky, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. But there is one decisive difference between you and her. Yeah, you don't look as good. And that is... You're not a defense attorney. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. Yeah, these prosecutors, they all got a little attitude. They're all a little sour. My first trial without a Faye helping me. No one's gonna bail me out this time. Alright, let's get this, guys. I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. We got this, man. You got me. You got her. We got all the audience. We're good. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. Is that a good or a bad thing? You a scientist. You're not a lawyer. February 23, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number nine. Courtroom number nine? Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. I'm so happy we still got the same judge. I love this guy. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth. I love Edgy Boy, too. <laughs> it's been two months, but I haven't been in a courtroom since his trial. You would think that after we saved his ass, he would, you know, not be against us anymore. Well, whatever. I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. Yeah, see? They are. My heart is breaking and aching right now. But you know what? I'm going to push that all aside, and let's get it. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. Your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Wow, he's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness! Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Starr, to the stand. The cough-up queen? Why is she called cough-up queen? Well, I'm glad she's not called, like, the gag queen. Hmm? Haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Ho ho! Caviar! I've never eaten caviar before! The judge is really wolfing it down! Ah, uh, and for you, I have a fiesta bowl! Uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, uh, and you, sir? Did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? It is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, Your Honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty, it hurts. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Tastes like your butt cheeks. I don't even know why I said that. Name, profession, now. Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. Hurry it up! Mm. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Uh-huh. What exactly does that mean? 
Until two years ago, Miss Angel Star was a special investigator with the police. She was a first-rate homicide detective. What? Miss Star was a detective? Ah! -ha! I know who you are! Cough up? Cough up Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. Uh, very well. You may continue with the description, Mr. Star. Why is he stuttering? Did she cough up something of yours, Mr. Judge? Just who is this lady? If I might have the court's attention over here. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up the prosecutor's spaces, yes? The crime took place by a car in the back of A block in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with this knife and went to drive the body out. Was that a witness testimony? Unfortunately for her, there was a witness and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, Your Honor. Parking lot floor plans added to the court record. The parking lot with Edgeworth's car. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm, it seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright? Uh, I can't agree on principle, Your Honor. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star! Wait, are they talking about me? Yeah, they talking shit! Witness testimony! Alright guys, Angel Star is the star witness, so we gotta lock in pretty hard. Let's go. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. When I sensed something, perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. Okay, we are definitely questioning that. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then, she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Hmm, bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend? How touching! <sighs> As you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than the point of the knife which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. So, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I... I'm still thinking about that. It's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Okay, so she was very specific in her testimony. Like, she mentioned that he was stabbed in the chest, she had the knife in the right hand, and all that stuff, so we are gonna make sure we look at the notes. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come, but why? How did you know a day like that was gonna come when somebody murders another person? Who says that? We're gonna say, HOLD IT! How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhorrence of crime, yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. Given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim, killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Star, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired. To me, Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well. You may continue, Miss Star. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. Who is your boyfriend? Hold it! This boyfriend. He's the detective? Not that boyfriend. The security guard. Uh, that boyfriend? You have several? Yes. This boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? The yet another boyfriend position is still open for applicants. I think he fits more of the old saggy balls boyfriend. I'll stick with the lunches, thanks. Note to self, the judge had to think before replying. 
<laughs> the security guard room is in the lot in block A. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the security sign. No shit, Phoenix. Incidentally, did you bring your lunchboxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B Block. So, she was in B Block when she witnessed the crime. When I sensed something, perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. Okay, that one doesn't seem so bad. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. HOLD IT! By garish car, you mean... Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. Mr. Edgeworth's? Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's. Wasn't it? Indeed, it was. What? Come on. Come on. It was his knife. It was kind of purple, you know, purple handle. Hmm. What an odd case this is. And the person you saw, you sure it was the defendant? I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. Witness! In your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness! You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. Who is this lady? I'll fry you like a fritter! Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside! That... that was inspiring! I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cry plagiarism? I may be relegated to the lowly post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed! Why does that look like Mia Faye too? Uh, a photograph! You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap! I took a picture. In fact... One of my lunchboxes is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Witness, why am I only seeing this photograph just now? You think I'd show it to you, a prosecutor? Think again. My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. The moment of the crime as photographed by Angel Star. Uh oh. That is unmistakably Lana Sky. So, what was the defendant doing at that time? The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Okay, let's check the court record, guys. I'm gonna check the autopsy. Death due to loss of blood. One knife wound died within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. Okay, that doesn't tell us crap. The murder weapon is in Edgeworth's toolbox. Traces of victim's blood, no prints. Okay, no fingerprints, so we don't know what hand it was from. And the moment of the crime as photographed by Angel Star. Okay. So she's wearing a jacket that we're assuming is blood. It could be dirt. She's putting something in the trunk of a car. It's in A block. But we don't know if that's Edgeworth's car or the car where the body was found. But let's see. We're not going to say anything yet. We're going to say, HOLD IT! Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife, after all. Uh, ahem. <clears throat> yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well-versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg from my egg salad surprise set. Y you can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg. I mean, a person. Hmm? Perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor? So, the defendant was holding a knife? What then? Then, she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. We're gonna hold that too? Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm, the defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late, but didn't you take a picture? Yes, the next moment... The chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I... I see. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Star's testimony is flawless. Sounds pretty fatal to me. 
What do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. Don't smile like that! Okay, guys, it says that the chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. There is actually a photo that she gave us, and there was no knife anywhere. There's no knife anywhere. We don't even know if this is blood on her coat. We are going to present this to the court. We're going to wind it up, and we're going to say, OBJECTION! And you witnessed this? You saw Miss Sky stab the victim with the knife? As I've already said, yes. Don't give me that shit. Mmm, I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. This is the photograph you took of the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Sky not holding a knife? Ahem. Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. Of course. That had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. <laughs> you might as well have whispered it into my ear. Yet, it was still stronger than your ever feeble mind, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. Objection! Yeah, object that, Phoenix. And how can you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stains on the chief prosecutor's coat? But it's a black and white photograph! Ah, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem, except you. Mr. Wright, are you gonna just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Ugh, you got a better idea? Yes, I got a better idea. You guys are gonna wind it up for me right now, we're gonna say, OBJECTION! Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it seems that was slightly unclear. My apologies. That's it? If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo-sized lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold, calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. Premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Well, are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh... If it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves! Whoa! No, guys, come on. Calm down. These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder, a serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. The murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Science, oh, we know that, okay. We gotta go back to our testimony, let's see. The murder was planned, the rubber gloves prove it. Okay, we gotta hold that. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves, like driving gloves? The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves of the kind used for autopsies. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder! It's the only possible conclusion one can make. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. <laughs> Impressive! I'm sorry they took you off the force, Miss Star. This is bad. She's got them thinking this was all planned. If she can prove this claim, the trial's already over. I've got to think of a way to show that this wasn't premeditated. It's gotta be the knife, guys, because if it was planned, how would she even know where Edgeworth's knife even was? She just happened to come across it and is like, alright, time to go stabby stabby! Because they're saying it was planned, it was premeditated, but why would she just all of a sudden have Edgeworth's knife? So it's gotta be the knife, so let's wind it up and... OBJECTION! Whoa! Witness! Do you know what this is? I know when the music stops, that's when you did something right. Are you trying to test me? I sell my lunch boxes for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. But if it was in the trunk, then how would you even know? The bloody murder weapon, a red car, all belonging to the prosecutor there? The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? Mommy, 
Are prosecutors pet people? Wait, what? Was that the jury talking? We asked that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, Ricky? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder. And that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon! Oh. Yeah. Check, bitch. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're gonna plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon! Ugh. Wow! Yeah, guys, you saw that? You saw what I just did there? That was Ball Z. Order! 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 Great! Now the tide is turning in our favor! Great show, Mr. Wright! My sister's as good as free! Oh no, you know when he does that, that's a no good, that's a no bueno. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. What? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail, but this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah! The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution needs to prove. Nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now? But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned! If it wasn't, why would she have been wearing... I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again! Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you? My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really now? Okay guys, second witness testimony, everybody. Left eye, right eye, if you have a third eye, everything, lock in. Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Well, there's already a contradiction right there. There was only one single stab wound, and she said again and again. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So, if I order the pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. What Emma just said was the dumbest shit that I've ever heard. Cross-examination, let's get it! Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Okay, we already know that's a contradiction because in the autopsy report, it says one knife wound must wind it up and... OBJECTION! You say she stabbed him again and again. Well, you couldn't have witnessed that! Are you testing me? Then I'll test you! With my moss surprise! I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha! Uh -huh. You're right! Good show, Mr. Edgeworth! What a hunk. He's my hero, really. He's mine, too. What about my objection? No one noticed? Well, witness? You've got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now, I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood! Testify! Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Miss Star has turned out to be as short-tempered as she looked when we met her. Challenging her abilities as a detective really set her off. 
A short wick burns out the fastest. It's a scientific fact. I wonder, wouldn't it depend on the size of the candle? I mean, add more wax and even a really short wick will burn longer. Obviously, more scientific testing is required. I don't like Emma that much. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. HOLD IT! You have no proof that Miss Guy called him there. You have no proof that she didn't. Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth, thoughts? There is no record of a call made on the defendant, Miss Lana Sky's phone. She might have written him a letter. Come on, you could have tried public phone first at least. In any case, the victim came to the prosecutor's office where he was murdered. I'm sure he had a reason to be there. Witness, why do you think it was the suspect who summoned the victim that day? I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim, but why? What kind of grudge? Well, I wouldn't know that. Of course you don't. That's because she didn't have a grudge. Rookie. I have a lunchbox here. Now, what's inside? How am I supposed to know? See, we agree there is a lunchbox here, but we don't know what's inside. A person's life is like a lunchbox with pretzels, don't you agree? I get it. That's why my lunch was so salty. This judge isn't very good with metaphors. The suspect had a grudge against Detective Goodman. Will you tell us your basis for thinking this? It's simple. Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Hold it! Her red muffler? Yes, like a scarf. The chief prosecutor always wears one around her neck. So she can be easily hanged at a moment's notice, I suppose. She's right. This guy was wearing a red scarf, wasn't she? But wait. Isn't it odd that you mistook that for splattered blood? Well... People often mistake my beard for a bib. A judge with a bib? That's why this place feels so much like a kindergarten sometimes. Actually, I do think I saw some traces of blood on her chest. She's not even wearing a scarf there. However, the autopsy report is clear on this matter. There was only one knife wound. Apparently, Miss Star isn't entirely sure of her own testimony. Mr. Wright! This is our chance! A chance for what, I wonder? The star had turned out to be as short-tempered as she looked when we met her. Okay, we know that, we know that. So, she was talking about the red muffler. Her red muffler looked like blood to me, right? So, let's go back and see that photo again. Did she have it on? She didn't even have it on! Alright, so I already know what to do. You guys gotta wind that thing up and... OBJECTION! Let's go! Miss Star, I demand an explanation! No, don't object me, Edgeworth. The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proved it yourself with this photograph. Huh? But that, that can't be. Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations. Perhaps you finally found your true calling in life. Damn. When did Edgy Boy become so freaking savage? Hmm, harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection, chopped liver? But it was there, a scarf. No, not that, but something red, really. Well now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. Alright guys, let's go. Lock in, guys. Witness testimony number three. This is the special one. Let's go. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. 
You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. An oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rawr! Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you will. Okay, I think I found some holes in that statement. But let me see if I'm right. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to the side. I have no idea what a partition is, so we're going to say, HOLD IT! So where is this partition on the floor plans? I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there, about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler, but what did she say? She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remember exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard her saying was the word muffler. Just that one word. So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else? Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean... Ask further, leave it be. Ask one more time for the homie DJ screw. My phone? Do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? My memory... It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see? No, the court doesn't see, Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car. There was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently, it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone? Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm, good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You should, of course, add this to your testimony. The things I do to please the rookie defense attorney. Lana's cell phone updated in the court record. The word muffler was overheard during a call made to Emma at 518. I saw it all. How she tried the phone on the wall but had to use her cell instead. The chief prosecutor made to escape but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. So Miss Sky tried to run? I'm sorry my sister is so suspicious, Mr. Wright. Not as sorry as I am. But she didn't do it. You have to believe me. Okay, she said that the chief prosecutor tried to escape. Let's question that. She made to escape. Can you be more specific? She brushed aside my hand and ran. It was a terrible sight to see, like a dollop of lard on a pate of foie gras. Huh? She even kicked over an oil drum at me. An oil drum? There was an oil drum lying on its side at the scene of the crime. But it's strange. Hmm? What's that? If she wanted to escape, why didn't she run the other way? The other... Ah! The parking lot entrance! That's right. It doesn't make any sense that she would run from behind the partition to the oil drums. Excellent. More mysteries. I wish we could solve a few more before finding more, though. So, Miss Sky tried to run. I'm sorry my sister is so suspicious. Okay, let's see here. Wait a minute. Wasn't this girl on the other side of the fence? How did she catch her? Let me press that. You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm. Maybe I should press her for more details? Yes. Press her. I'd like to see this on the floor plan, just to be safe. The lunch land car was... She was a visitor, thus she was parked in Block B. So, you witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes? 
Is that correct, Miss Star? Yes, that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing! The cough up queen, lunch lady athlete, indeed! It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. So she couldn't have gone to my sister that fast. Yeah, the fence was about nine feet high, too. So how did Miss Sky not get away? Yeah, there's no freaking way. That's a fucky wucky right there. Okay, let's go back to that. When she says she caught her. And then we are going to object with the floor plan. Right there, I quickly caught her. We are going to present the floor plan, which is right here. Wind it up and... OBJECTION! No? What? Oh, come on! Wait a minute. A contradiction that might be here is when she said, I saw it all, how she tried the phone on the wall but had to use her cell instead. It says here that she used the cell phone at 518. Do we wind it up a little bit and say, OBJECTION! No, we don't. We just took another L. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. Then she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. And then she happened to jump the fence. Okay. And during that time, you climbed over the chain link fence. Yeah, right. Then, when I boldly grabbed her arm, the chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this? What is it, Mr. Wright? So, once we go back to that phone testimony, we gotta show the floor plan. Where is it? Right here. Okay, she said that she saw it all, but if there was like a partition there, then how could she see through a wall? She ain't a superhero, so parking lot floor plans wind it up and... OBJECTION! Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. Objection. Don't object that. Don't do it. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Huh, I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. Ahem, let's look at the floor plans. Oh yeah, give her that check, mate boy. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true, you couldn't possibly have seen Miss Guy making that phone call. Got him. I believe you see what I'm getting at. Yeah, you're full of shit. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it! Wow! Yes, guys, she said wow. Arda! Arda! What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch, she's coughing up lies! Go! That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about what she saw, where she saw it, the order of the events. She lied about what she saw, where she saw it. Yeah, she lied about where she saw it. Because maybe, yeah, the girl was using the phone, but she lied about where she was standing when she saw it. Miss Sky tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie. I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Guy using the phone. It would mean Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. Objection. A different location. Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Objection. Before you call my life pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. The place from where Miss Star witnessed the crime was security room? I don't know. It had to have been, right? With her boyfriend? I'm gonna go with that. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Yeah, she was making sweet, sweet love. Indeed. 
The security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor so you can see the entire lot. Hmm, she would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime in the back of the partition is here. I remember in your testimony you said, You brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Star? How many years have I been getting the better of men? To think that the tables could be turned. Today, a man has got the better of Angel Star. Yes, guys, you heard that right. The better of Angel Star. Arda! Arda! Witness! What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Sky? Um, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. But who took that photo? If it wasn't her, then who took that photo? The truth still stands. It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So, tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? Uh, me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Star witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Yeah? But she lied and said she saw it from B-Block. It must make a vital difference, but what? What would change? Angle of view to the crime, distance to the crime, difference in lighting, distance to the crime! It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime! Objection! My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plan and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. Objection! Yeah, but the fence though. What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Yup. Bingo! Miss Star, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there? To the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Sky. Well, witness? You... Yes? You ordered the squid wheels, right? The quality of my lunches has gone from low to inedible. I was bringing a PB&J lunch with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend! He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass-walled station. Then why did she lie? And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. Yeah, why is she lying about all this, though? No, that changes the time significantly. There's no freaking way, dude. That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking in B-Block. That's quite a detour. Nah, that's a big lie. That's a big, big lie. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. Five minutes? Hmm, this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point. And the spork is a wonderful invention. <laughs> Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely! Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? Yes, raise an objection! Objection! Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You could make pasta in that amount of time. If you like it al dente. 
I've got lunch boxes that tie pasta into nuts, rookie. A five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange? If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey! Don't get the wrong idea. I didn't kill anyone. When you had the instincts of a killer, you would run. But this time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Yeah! Well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated the witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright! Uh, that was too close. I'm afraid that the cough-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned! Yes! Woo! Hold it! Who? Who holded it? You? Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to foist off on me! I prefer to not take the defense as team leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. What was that? Is this another one of her trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Ah. Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Whoa! A triple decker! Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the Lunchland model says, you won't be disappointed. What's she gonna pull out of her lunchbox this time? Wow, another testimony, guys. Decisive evidence. Everybody, you're already locked in, so I don't even need to say it. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, to the matter of the victim's shoe, did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was, of course, the victim's, and the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. What? There was blood found on that shoe? Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. There we go. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple, as I've already said, I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. Is one of them Big Dick Gumshoe? In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Is that right, Mr. Wright? I guess. Seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, the shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. No. Uh, oh. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Will you shut up? Why don't you make a note to yourself to shut up? It seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. You can at least study some evidence law, really. Emma is so freaking annoying. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Victim shoe added to the court record. White enamel shoe bears traces of blood from Goodman and Lana Sky. Okay, is that a fact? Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Goodness gracious, dude.
Okay, let's go. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, to the matter of the victim's shoe, did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on the shoe. One was, of course, the victim's. Hold it! So, you brought it to the forensics department? If you're gonna submit something as evidence in court, you need it approved. To do that, evidence must be analyzed by a forensics expert. And she got away with her little coop because she used to be a detective. The shoe does appear to have blood stains on it. Well, the man was stabbed after all. And that blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman? As I said, there were two types of blood found on the shoe. Why the girls, though? And the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Hold it. You can't say for sure the blood belonged to the defendant with a blood test. You claim to know something about blood tests, rookie? Huh? Well, speak up! Oh, uh, well... Blood comes in four types, A, B, O, and A, B. However... You can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was committed in cold blood! You know I'm right, right? That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright! Actually, we can differentiate between millions of types with all the blood tests out there. Which means that we can more or less narrow any sample of blood just down to one person. Or so I hear. Uh, that's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have gotten DNA test results. But they said there's very little doubt it could be anyone but Miss Lana Skies. Hmm, so the suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid he was going to say that. The shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. I'm just going to question everything right now, guys. I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Who? what the heck? Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some, like your client, she's in enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or don't have a problem with the shoe? A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? There's no problem, there's a problem. Well, we gotta say that there's a problem. If I'm not imagining things... I'd say there is one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction! That gleam in your eyes. You're still young, rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? You know what? Let me see something real quick. Let me look at this photo. She's wearing black shoes. I knew it! She's wearing black shoes! How did she get blood on her white shoes if she's wearing black shoes? Let's go, man! I'm too good at this stuff! Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with this evidence. Let's freaking go, man. All right. Um, wait, we really doing this right now? Hold up. Uh, wait. Oh, I thought I was supposed to look for a yellow, but let's just click on the white. The problem with this evidence is here. Where? Uh, take that finger and point at your own head, Mr. Wright. What? Dude, I'm trying to say that she wasn't wearing a white shoe, bro. Hmm, guess that wasn't it. Mr. Wright, let's be scientific about this. Examine the evidence. I'm trying, dude. As I thought, a waste of time. Well, that was a nice break. Let's return to the testimony, shall we? No, dude. I gotta do it again. Let me open the court record. Okay, where is the crime photo? Okay, let's see something. Okay, I knew it. I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Get me back to the freaking shoe! Come on. Okay, so this is my last chance, but there's blood on the bottom of the shoe. If she was walking around, why are there no bloody footprints, you know? I've been playing a lot of games where there's some bloody footprints. Why were there no bloody footprints on this shoe? I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of the shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Hmm. Indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of this shoe? Okay, well, the crime photo clearly doesn't have any blood leading up to this car. 
So this is my last chance. Hopefully I'm right. Objection! I mean, take that! <laughs> the problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't any bloody footprints found by the scene of the crime? Aha! As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about the shoe! This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. Yeah, there you go, Phoenix. Stand up for yourself. Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Yes, guys, nothing of the sort. Order! 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 Well, witness? What? Uh-huh. I, uh... Great going, Mr. Wright, but... It's true that the lack of footprints is a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh. That's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright. Think. Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? Oh, no, the finger wag. Not the infamous finger wag. I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. What are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, she's beautiful but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rar. I thought that was a strange thing for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that, hmm? I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. Witness! Well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. Water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright? Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! You don't mean... Yes, the suspect knocked over the oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstains that would become evidence against her! Wow! That ties things up quite nicely! The bloodstains left on the victim's shoes tie her quite clearly to this murder. Then, after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a prosecutor's specialty, erasing evidence. That reminds me, Miss Guy's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she'd cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe? Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. Mr. Wright, do something, please. What? What can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime, and she tried to conceal it. Uh, but... Enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. There we go. I was waiting for that. Little girl, what did you just say? Huh? Me? Did you just say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? Well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints. Well. I thought you'd had your fill, but here you are, demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox. A lunchbox called Evidence. Wait! Witness! Don't tell me you have something else! Objection. Wow, she has even more evidence? Are you joking me? The time for deliberations is past. 
any further comments and you will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare the cough up queen. Look at this. A photograph? I had it just in case anyone had the gall to suggest. But the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm. I see no room for error in this evidence. Oh, I thought the shoe belonged to the girl the whole time. Whoops. Mm, Mr. White, wait. Look at the asphalt in this photo. Hey, it's clearly wet. Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I... I couldn't help after all. It's not your fault. I know I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. I'm sorry, Mia. Right. Wet or not. Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself off, off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well. This time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Objection! I knew it. There we go. Your Honor, wait! What is it with you people? Can't I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? Whatever it is, can it wait? No, it can't. Then it will be too late. Look at this photograph. The last one submitted. This trial isn't over. Until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah! I'll think later. Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem in this photograph. Uh... Okay... The problem in this photograph is... Is that water coming from the car? What is that? Um, the problem in this photograph... Okay, I'm guessing it's either that there's not that much blood on this shoe, or that there's water coming out of here. So, I'm gonna choose that. The problem in this photograph is here! What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler! Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth! Your Honor! You just said muffler! However, I see no trace of muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also a part of a car or motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system. A pipe. I see. And I see. Yeah, I knew there was something sticking out of here. What's, what's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Huh. So what if there's something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Objection! Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not gonna be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. Yeah, she said muffler over the phone. What? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth in the muffler is related to this case. Because she said the word muffler was overheard during a call made to Emma at 5.15. I only have one more chance and it's blinking, so if I get this wrong, it's over. Please be right. Please! Miss Star! Recall your testimony to the court. Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler? Oh! Yeah! Could it be that the muffler you heard mention was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence! Oh! Whoa! Got him! You know what we do. Well, it seems we'll have to suspend the proceedings. Sus suspend 
I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Whew. That was close. But we made it. At least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. He's still hungry? To be continued. Wow. Damn, that was a long trial. This episode has like some long pieces to it. But we are about to figure out what was inside that muffler in the next episode. If you guys want to see that as soon as possible, make sure you guys give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude!